<laughs> Sorry. It's a long day. <laughs> mm, that's... Now I think uh, Nova saved us, so... Ho hopefully... Is I... it working now? Because I saw it over there okay, at some point. Yeah. Cool, so, so we, can, we can start, maybe, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. my god, lovely. Okay, Okay, cool. sorry for that, people that have to listen to me for five minutes. No, uh, th thank you all for bearing with me. Uh, so, so I asked myself, what is the difference between a regular talk and a keynote? And the answer was uh, out of focus cat pictures. Um, so hopefully you enjoy this. Um, I promise there are more. Although many of them are in focus, it turns out it's kind of hard to search for out of focus cat pictures uh, on Flickr, um, which is unfortunate. Oh, well, this is not working, but that's, that's, that's all right. Well, I have another one. Okay, cool. There we go. So um, I'm going to talk about open source code reviews. Um, specifically, I'm going to talk about building sustainable data analytics. Um, and this matters a lot to me because I work on open source uh, data analytics, so I'm, I'm pretty biased. Um, and also, I see a lot of maintainer burnout happening in the community. Um, certainly, there's companies like Confluent that have stepped up behind specific Apache projects. Uh, and that can be a way of ensuring there's development. Um, but I think that we're better when we embrace a broader community besides just one company. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, alternatively, the alternative title is convincing you to do my job for free. Uh, so hopefully I trick some of you. I uh, convince you. Okay. It, uh, it worked once. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah. So my name is Holden. Uh, my pronouns are she or her. Um, I'm on the Apache Spark PMC, and I contribute to a lot of other projects, but here I'm just speaking as an individual. Um, so this doesn't necessarily represent the views of the Apache Spark project. Uh, these are my own views. I'm a co-author of two books that are completely unrelated to what I'm talking about, but that should not stop you from buying them. Uh, specifically the second one, because uh, that's the one where I learned you can negotiate royalties. Uh, so definitely buy that one. Um, if you have feedback on this talk, I, I have a, a link at the bottom, um, and I am always looking for, for feedback, preferably constructive. Today is not my day with computers. Uh, okay, so in addition to who I am professionally, I'm trans, queer, uh, Canadian, living in America on an H-1B work visa that expires in April. Um, really fun, no longer extendable, um, and part of the leather community. Uh, and no, so this, this doesn't directly relate to open source, but I think one of the things that I care about uh, is for those of us who are building data tools and machine learning tools that we have diverse communities building them so we don't just recreate yesterday's technology or yesterday's systems without asking ourselves if we're doing the right thing. And I think one of the things that we need to do this is talk about where we're all from and see if we have diverse teams working on our open source projects. And if we don't, we need to go out and try and make those teams diverse. So if you're working on an open source project, please talk with the other people working on that project about where you're from. And if you realize that you all went to school together, um, maybe try and find some people who went to a different school, you know, or something like that. So I'm going to talk about what you can get from participating in open source. Um, I'm going to try and tell you why the community needs your help. And then I'm going to go ahead and give you some tips on how you can actually do code reviews. And um, there's an optional exercise time uh, where I will hopefully convince some people to take the break uh, at one of these sessions to go and review a pull request. It really doesn't take that long. Uh, but I understand coffee is pretty tempting too, so I, I won't feel hurt if you don't do this. Um, so I'm hoping you're nice people. Um, maybe you're here, you want to grow your career, maybe you care about data analytics, or maybe you're just here because you have to sit through the keynotes for the other tracks, and like, whatever, that's fine. Um, but I, I want to be clear, like, well, I come from data analytics. Um, doing the data analytics on uh, the GitHub projects, uh, the overwhelming need for reviewers is not unique to the Apache Software Foundation. If we look at JavaScript projects, if we look at other projects by language, there is an overwhelming need for reviewers there too. There's just less systems in place to formalize it. Um, and so I think some of the techniques might be a little bit different for folks working in JavaScript, for example, but I still think you should be doing this uh, in JavaScript. Okay. 
So I said this was going to be uh, a lot like mermaid school. Did anyone read the description for this talk? No. OK, thank God. OK. Uh, well, you did, but that's, that's, that's fine. You're, you're, anyways, so open source code reviews are like mermaid school. Uh, and I, I was going to dress like a mermaid, but yeah. It, so the monofin is the part that just wouldn't fit in my check baggage. It was, was unfortunate. Um, but so they're, they're similar. You can do them in any place in the world, right? You don't have to be in San Francisco, um, although if you look at some open source projects, you might get that mistaken impression. Um, they help you grow your skills, right? And they build on top of your existing skills, right? Mermaid School builds on top of your ability to swim, and code reviews build on top of your ability to program. Um, you get better with time, but you need to start somewhere. If you just put on a monofin and, and jump in the pool, there's a chance you might drown. Um, a few people do every year. So, you know, be careful um, when doing this. And also be careful when doing code reviews. You might piss off the people that you need to work with in the future. So, you know, we, but we'll, we'll, we'll do it. Um, it'll be good. And people don't always understand how they're going to help your career. Um, and I say this because my boss didn't want to pay for mermaid school the first three times I asked him. Um, <laughs> Um, he didn't understand how my job was very clearly directly related to mermaid school, and it was required for me to continue to function at the same level um, in that I was going to quit uh, if he didn't pay for mermaid school. But we, we eventually reached an understanding, and he paid for two-thirds of mermaid school. So it was, it was okay, you know, I mean, mermaid school cost me 30 bucks um, as a result, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's fine, it's fine. Oh, and coffee makes it better. Uh, coffee makes almost everything better, uh, in my opinion, but, but tea is, is also acceptable. Okay. So how is this going to help you if you start doing open source code reviews? You're going to grow your skills. We'll talk about that. You'll get to see the world of open source. Yeah. Um, you may receive faster recognition in the communities that you're, you're working in. And you get a sort of deeper integration. You get to know the people who are working on the project a lot more than when you're just contributing patches. Um, and another thing that I think is really important, uh, who here only has sort of fixed free time that they can contribute towards open source? I, 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 okay, well, I guess there's only one person who wants to do this anyways, but that's okay. That's okay. I, I think one of the things that's great about code reviews is you can set aside some time, do a code review, and you can provide value, but if I set aside some time and make a PR, I kind of have to stay there with that PR and follow it through this very long process that can be sort of indeterminate in length, and I don't know at the start of my adventure how long the adventure is going to be. So what, what do I mean by seeing more of the world? So starter issues and projects tend to touch one very narrow piece of the project. Um, and that's because, you know, learning all the project can be very challenging. Um, but when you're doing code reviews, you see someone changing large pieces of the project, and you can see how they fit together. Um, and moving beyond starter issues, there's only so many hours in the day to write code. Um, and so for me, I work on Apache Spark. I work in specific areas of Spark. That's where I make code changes. But I try and review areas outside of the ones that I work in all the time so that I remain sort of aware of what's happening in the rest of the project. Um, and it also lets you take your skills between projects, right? So maybe you learned Python, maybe you learned JavaScript, maybe you're really burnt out working with certain people in your community. Um, you know, maybe there's assholes. You can move to another project where well, there will almost certainly be different assholes. Um, but it's okay, you can take your skills and you can transfer them a lot faster than you can with trying to pick up a new project from the scratch. Uh, you can get faster recognition. Um, and this matters for, for some people um, in the Bay Area. If you're working on Apache projects and you're recognized as a committer, you can sometimes weasel more money or mermaid school out of your employers. Um, and reviewers stand out, right? Contributors are great. Like, there's nothing, nothing wrong with people who contribute PRs. That's, that's lovely. Don't stop doing that if you already do. Um, just do more work for free. Um, but the, the thing about PR contributors is, in Spark, there's thousands of them. I have no idea who they are, right? Like, they, they come with one small bug fix. It's great. We work through it. We get it merged. That's lovely. I'm not going to remember them, right? But on the other hand, the people who review PRs, I see their comments. They, they tend to come back. They review a few PRs. And after a while, I'm like, you know what? I trust this person's judgment. I think they're really good. If they tell me it's good, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'll just accept their changes. And then, you know, if they come with their own code changes, it's just like, oh, yeah, no, no, they know their way 
around the project, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Um, I think easier control of time is important for those of us who aren't paid to work on open source day in and day out, or even those of us who are, maybe we get burned out sometimes. Um, and, and with contributing a PR, shepherding it through the entire process can literally take years. Um, I have open PRs from 2015 that I am, I am still actually actively working on. Uh, part of that is sunk cost fallacy. Um, the other part of that is like sometimes it just takes a long time to get everyone to agree on a thing. Um, I also have stayed up very late fixing one more bug in my code many, many times. And I find it a lot easier to just stop doing a code review part of the way through when I'm like, you know what, it's 1 a.m. and I need to go to work tomorrow, right? But if I'm writing code, I'm just like, no, no, it's so close. It's so close. Yeah, okay. So why does the community need you, right? Like this is, this is great for you, but why do, why do we need your help? Um, so a lot of projects suffer from maintainer burnout. Um, many projects aren't limited by the code contributions, rather they're limited by reviewer bandwidth. Um, another one is, while we may have diverse contributors in certain places, uh, we might not have diverse reviewers. And the thing is, diverse contributors is, is a great start, but the reviewers are the ones who decide what the project is going to do, where it's going to go. Um, and Eh, you know, there's a lot of them in San Francisco, and it's great, but sometimes we, we forget about things like GDPR, you know, things, things in the rest of the world. I mean, not, not GDPR anymore, because you, you got for, oh, I should stop talking. Uh, okay, um, and the, the other one is experienced reviewers become blind to the way it's done, right? Uh, I've worked on Spark for so long that there are things in there that, like, if I could just, like, forget, about them and then come back to them with a fresh set of eyes, I'd be like, oh dear God, no, what were we doing? Um, and you can be the person who comes along and tells me, Holden, that's a terrible idea. I know you've done it 20 times, but we should stop. Um, okay, and, and representing the users. Uh, this one's important too. We often make software which is entertaining, you know, it's fun to build, but sometimes someone has to come along and be like, so I'm really curious, how do you think people are going to use this feature, right? Um, and sometimes that can lead to a moment of self-reflection where you're like, yeah, um, I guess I need to make it callable. Mm, okay, okay. Good, good point. Um, or just like things like, hey, you know, can we do this a little bit differently? This is my use case, and I think it would really benefit from this feature, but I need to see X, Y, or Z to be able to use it, right? And this is really great because you get software that meets your needs now. Not a guarantee. Okay. Uh, so here's a bunch of projects. We've got open PRs and merged PRs. Some of them are, are like very, very happy together, um, but there's, there's also a good number which have many open PRs and very few merged PRs. And those can be ones where, as a maintainer, the idea of opening GitHub just becomes kind of overwhelming and sad. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what it would be like to have 10K open pull requests. I only have 500, but oh god, right? Like, that, I, I would probably just like light my computer on fire and walk away. Right? If I was doing it alone. Uh, okay, so we can look at, at the rate of PRs created to the rate of them being reviewed. So um, you might notice there's a difference between these two lines. Uh, the blue line is, is higher. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it gets a little lower near the end, but I think that's BigQuery. Uh, was, so, so don't worry, I'm sure it's still on fire. Uh, I think that was good news. Anyways, um, and, and the, the months don't really matter. Okay, cool. Anyways, moving on. Um, and so especially successful projects need your help, right? Um, you might think like, oh, I'll, I'll help out on this like small project, and that's cool. That's really great. You should totally do that. Um, but if there's like a big project and you're just like, you know what? That's such a big project. There's so many important people who work on it. I, I'm sure they don't need my help. Oh dear God, no, they need your help. For sure. Um, we've got this renewed plea for help from Wes McKinney, uh, the original creator of Pandas, um, who's working on Apache Arrow. And 
he's just like, hey, what's up? Um, we, we just don't have enough maintainers for this project, and if we don't get more maintainers, it's gonna fail. And so that's like, kind of scary if you work in, in the data space. Um, and at least, like, this is really nice because he's being very explicit about it. A lot of other times, people just burn out and, and walk away, right? They don't, like, ask for help because we're not really conditioned to do that. Uh, here's Spark with 525 open pull requests. I think we have this down to the 400s now, though, so, like, good job, us. Um, but that's still substantially more than the number of people around to do reviews. Um, I think if I was doing, like, a review a day, you know, I, I could finish it maybe by the end of next year. Um, and that'd be pretty solid, but the only problem is the PRs keep coming. This, 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 it doesn't end. Okay, um, so I was gonna do a live code review demo. We're gonna skip that in the interest of time given my exciting issues with computers today. Um, for one thing, I'm pretty sure my Wi-Fi is not gonna work after, after all of the magic that we had to do. Um, but if you want, I have, I have videos where I do code reviews. I, I know for some of you that sounds as exciting as watching paint dry, but, but trust me, it's actually really fun, right? You, you get to take a problem, look at how someone else solved it, and like help them do better. Or just be like, you know what? This is an amazing solution. This is so cool, let's, let's do it. And it's, it's really fun and exciting, provided you drink enough coffee beforehand. Okay. So many of us probably are used to doing code reviews inside of our company. But when it comes time to do them outside of our company, we need to do things a little bit differently. Um, there's a good chance that you probably haven't met the people that you're reviewing their code in person. Um, there's often a lot more diversity of level of language comfortability. Um, a lot of Apache projects insist that everything is in English, even when many of the contributors don't feel comfortable in that language. Um, not necessarily ideal, that's a story for several beers later. Um, but you know, this, this can be a challenge, right? When you, you see descriptions of things not matching what you see in the code, it can be a little bit confusing. Um, there's less shared assumptions, right? Like people inside of my company, like we might, we might get into disagreements, but we generally agree about where we're going. But other people in different companies have completely different use cases for the same software. Um, and it's really hard to walk over and apologize to someone, right? Like if I screw up in my day job, there's a really good chance I can be like, hey, I'm really sorry, let me, let me buy you lunch and, and we'll just talk about it, right? But if I piss off someone online, it's not, it's not really feasible. Um, and also sometimes strangers um, plus the internet equals assholes. Um, and in that case, I encourage you not to work with assholes. Um, there are certainly times when we have to work with assholes, but if you're looking at a project and you're like, wow, these people are mean, pick another project. There's, there's a lot of other happy ones out there. When, when you come and join this new project, you'll be able to help us see all of the weird, silly things that we've been doing that we should stop doing. Um, and you can call out things that we're doing that maybe are, are rational but don't make sense to you so that we can describe them so that our, our software is actually maintainable if one of us gets hit by a bus um, or you know, wins X million dollars and, and goes off. Uh, I mean, in San Francisco, it would have to be billion because X million dollars is a condo. Um, but you, same idea, same idea. And you can be less intimidating if you, if you want. Um, I, I think this can be really cool. When I first started contributing to Spark, all of the reviewers were people who were like, had been contributing to Spark from the very beginning. And like, they would come and say things and I'd be like, oh God, that's really scary. But if there was another person who was new around, who was helping me out, it probably would have felt more like teamwork. Um, and I think that that can be really beneficial. We're gonna pick a project, yay! We're gonna get familiar with the tools, and we're gonna figure out how people communicate, and then we're gonna find a PR to review. So, it works better if the project is in a language you understand. Trying to review code in a language you don't understand is possible, but I don't recommend it. It feels like a rusty spoon and an eyeball. Um, <laughs> Ideally, one which needs review help. So if you go and you look at a project, there's one open pull request, everything else has been merged. Maybe this is not the one where you need to help out, right? Um, and 
ideally a project that's friendly. Read their mailing list, look how they interact on other pull requests. If they're mean, go find somewhere else. Okay, now we, we want to learn the tools. And this is a mermaid tool. Um, it keeps you from inhaling water up your nose when you're doing your mermaid spins underwater. Um, and just like mermaid tools, different projects have slightly different tools, right? Some mermaids don't use that tool. Some projects don't use Travis. Um, some projects prefer, you know, Circle CI. Um, find the integration tests, you know, figure out their version control system. Uh, find the project's issue tracking system and the mailing lists, and figure out how to build the code. I think that one is really important um, because often this part can be really, really painful. And sometimes, how would I say this? People submit code which is more aspirational than complete. And being able to help people understand that their code is in an aspirational state uh, can be useful. And doing that and helping people with CI errors is a lot easier when you can build the code yourself. So yeah, uh, right, for example, I, yeah, so we'll, we'll get familiar with how the project communicates. I might not pick the Linux kernel as the project that I wish to contribute to based on reading their mailing list, right? Um, now, you might read that and be like, you know what, that's the way how I like to communicate, and if so, that's, that's great. Uh, go over there. Um, on the other hand, you know, you might read the Spark mailing list and be like, you know, this, these people really like using academic terms, and I, I don't like talking in this way. Maybe you'll find another project uh, which matches how I like to communicate. I think for first PRs to review, smaller PRs can be better. Ideally, find something you care about. So if you're picking a project that you actually use day to day, you can hopefully find someone who's changing a feature that you use or adding a feature that you think you might use. And then you can go ahead and, and really take a look at this. Um, it's often easier to be one of their early reviewers. If there's already six or seven reviewers, it, you know, it can be very crowded. Um, so I look for things where there's not a lot of other people hanging around already. So doing your first review, it can be very intimidating. Um, when I'm doing a review on a new project, I like to preface it with I'm new to this project, but, um, or things which essentially indicate like, hey, I'm not completely sure, but I think this is my understanding. And then sometimes I'll get feedback which is like, no, your understanding is a little off, um, but let's try and figure out how we can fix that. Um, if there's a style guide, you can help people with style guides. I know it's not the most exciting thing being like, hey, we use spaces instead of tabs, or tabs instead of spaces. Um, but you know that can be that can be helpful if you know uh, saving another reviewer some time, making sure it builds on your platform. A lot of a lot of things have wonderful CI systems, uh, but they don't all necessarily build across all of the platforms. So making sure it works for you, um, being prepared to go ahead and look at the libraries that are being used, I think is really beneficial. Because sometimes, and, and I've seen this inside of Spark, we'll use something and then we'll just assume that's the right way to use it. Because we did that before. We'll just keep doing it. And then it takes a new person coming along and being like, so I, I read the documentation for the library that you're using here. And it says not to do this. Um, is there, is like, why are we doing it this way? And then sometimes we'll be like, oh yeah, you know, this is why. Or other times we'll be like, oh, cool, maybe, maybe we're not going to do that. Uh, okay. Communicate carefully, please. Um, telling people their code sucks isn't really actionable feedback, and it also can just be really depressing and disheartening. Um, you might not know how much time someone put into it. It might be a one-line change for you and you're like, this is like super trivial, I can just tell them no. Um, but on the other hand, like this might be their very first open source PR ever. And if you're just like, no, nah, this is this is trivial and it's a waste, like they might just feel completely, you know, not welcome, and then we'll lose this wonderful person from contributing. Um, make it clear you're new to the project. Understand that folks can get defensive about their code. I think many of us have experienced that from inside of ourselves before. Um, and certainly expect that from strangers on the internet as a very real possibility. I'm not saying like you should let them just walk all over you, but I'm saying sometimes, you know, if people feel really, really strongly about a thing, eh, it's not worth arguing about. Someone else will come along and tell them no later, or no one will bother talking to them again. 
Um, people are allowed to be wrong on the internet. It's okay. Um, it turns out it happens a lot, not just on GitHub. Um, and it's okay to be scared, right? Like, reviewing someone's work is a very scary thing if it's the first time you're doing it. So we can, we can help um, make some of these things a little bit less scary with some simple phrasing. Um, this is slow. Can we be replaced? Could we do this faster? Maybe you can suggest how you could actually do it faster. Like, think about it. Be like, hey, we're doing this like search in a linked list, but I think if we used a hash table here, it would make sense. I know it's only 10 elements, but, or, you know, some, some things like this. Um, this is hard to understand. I'm confused makes it more about myself, and that's much less like, they can just be like, oh, it's fine. She doesn't understand, but I'll add a comment for her. And it doesn't say that their code is hard to understand, just that I'm confused. Um, have you looked at X? What are we trying to do here? You know, different things like this. Uh, do, do, do. There's some great articles on how to do internal code reviews, um, and I think these are great. Uh, but be aware some of their advice like doesn't make sense. Like you can't go over and pair program with someone on the internet very easily. I mean, maybe you can set up a remote desktop session, but I'm not setting up a remote desktop session with a stranger. That's just not fun. Um, but you know, so, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, you should also take my advice with a grain of salt. I, I'm just like a dinosaur. Um, okay. So at a break, you can go ahead and do this, right? You can go look up your favorite open source project, find a pull request, and, and comment on it. And if you want to do this, I am dressed like a dinosaur, you can come find me, and, and I am more than happy to help. I'm happy to look at things and be like, eh, maybe we can tone this down a little bit, or be like, this is so toned down, no one's going to understand what you're asking for here, right? Um, if anyone is interested in doing this, you, you could raise your hand, and then maybe other people could find each other. Hmm, there's like two people. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, so the three of you should hang out together. Um, and I think one of the things that can be really great about doing this is you can do pair reviews. Um, especially if you've got someone with like UI experience or like JavaScript experience. Um, some of the hardest pull requests to review in Spark are the ones that touch Python and Scala at the same time. We need to do that very often, but finding someone who understands both of those to review the same pull request is really hard. And so working with someone else to review the different parts of it together and then combining your understanding is really great. Okay, I did promise that I was gonna try and get you to buy my book. You should buy it. Um, if you buy it, I receive almost a quarter of a cup of coffee worth of royalties. Uh, you too can help a developer from turning to a life of enterprise support contracts. <sighs> okay. Um, I have a random project. It generates clothing items from code, including dresses with pockets. This is not one of them. It is a dinosaur dress. Um, it is entertaining code in and of itself. Uh, I, I wrote this to learn Kubernetes. Um, but it's, it's fun if anyone wants like a dress made of their code, or a tank top made of their code, or a skirt made of their code. Um, Skirts can be gender neutral, it's fine. It's fine, right? They tell me t-shirts are gender neutral. So anyways, okay. Um, the other one is my, my final plug here. Um, if anyone is interested in the idea of teaching children uh, the basics of distributed systems, I'm currently working on a project to teach kids distributed systems. And this is, this is not a joke. This is, I, I, I know it sounds like a joke, but I, I really think we can teach kids the basics of Apache Spark. Uh, and if you are as optimistic as I am, uh, you can join me on this adventure and we can, we can try and teach children the basics of Apache Spark together. Um, and don't worry, I have already received the feedback that the gnomes look like they ate some local Amsterdam products um, <laughs> and should be replaced with something less drug-fueled. So I, I, I will do that. Um, the original illustrator, uh, how would they say this? Really likes music festivals, yeah. Um, okay, and so with that, I, I have 40 seconds left, so uh, we'll just wrap it up. If you have any questions, if you want to do this, please come and find me. I, I really hope I tricked more than three people into doing this. Um, if I only tricked three, it's, it's okay. But please, the open source community needs you. Our software is completely screwed. Um, please come and help. <laughs>